while developing distributed systems there are different school of thoughts in developing systems as api first approach versus event first approach without understanding these individual concepts and how can they coexist we cannot come to a conclusion on whether we should go with api first approach or the event first approach in this video we are going to compare and contrast apis and events and we are going to look at can they coexist in a distributed ecosystem let's get started press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss any update from tech primers the agenda goes straight forward we are going to look at apis versus events we will look at some of the basics and then we will compare and contrast with both of them we are going to see when can we use apis and when can we use events we will be again comparing them then we will look at a case study by designing a payment interface which is a simple uh, interface which i'm going to build and we are going to look at how can we overlay apis and events within the same architecture and how can they coexist within the same ecosystem and finally we are going to look at some of the limitations within apis and also events so the first one is comparing apis and events apis are usually synchronous and they follow a contract events on the other hand are asynchronous and they also follow a contract a contract in this case is a predefined set of definition on how the apis will behave or how the events will look like there are different standards for example in events there are cloud events using which you can define your cloud event structure which is a open source specification using which you can come up with producer and consumer specific contract and you can define that and then use it within your cloud based ecosystem on the other hand apis are defined using something like open api specification or earlier it was called as swagger so we can define a api specification give it to the consumer and the producer can work on the api meanwhile the consumer is going to create their code based on the contract which we have given to them apis act as an interface for an integrated ecosystem so integrated ecosystem i mean here is a distributed microservices world where we have an interface using which you are going to interact with that particular system events on the other hand are usually reactions to a state change if something happens and you want to react to it that's what events are for if an order gets placed it's a create event if an order gets updated it's an update event if an order gets completed it's a complete event all these are state changes and that's what constitutes an event apis usually are written in http protocol or recently people are using grpcs graphqls and r socket these are different protocols using which you can define your apis events on the other hand could be transmitted over mqp mqtt stomp or even sockets apis usually follow a request response kind of a model there are also web sockets or r sockets which can do two way communication and then you can have back pressure and things like that but events are mostly subscription based while apis can be flexible in terms of the model events usually are subscription based where you subscribe to a queue and using that queue or a messaging system you can consume these messages which we call as events we can communicate with the apis directly using direct communication so there is no intermediary within the system with which we interact with for example if a consuming application hits a api from the producer it's going to be served from the producer directly most of the time there will be load balancers or api gateways which are going to be abstracted however still we directly communicate with the producer events on the other hand follow a broker or a mediator kind of a pattern where there is an intermediary system which takes the messages and then it can pass on to the other system so the message resides in some other system for a particular period of time until we consume them so when should i use apis and when should i use events use apis when you want to have type coupling within your systems which are going to be consuming and producing this is to make sure that there is no intermediary system and you know who the consumers are and the producers are we should use apis when we need instance response when we query a data use apis when you want to reuse your data and you don't want to duplicate the same data in another system and then use it use events when you want to have loosely coupled system and you want to provide flexibility in terms of who your consumer is how many ever consumers are present and also what type of technology or protocol the consumer is going to consume from also use events when you want to have orchestration based microservices pattern 
within your architecture. Finally, use events when there is a state change and you want to capture or react to these events and do some processing based on these state changes. Let's look at this whole thing with a case study. Let's imagine there is a payment API. This could be a payment API provided by a banking system. And underneath this payment API, there is a contract which is provided to us. For example, there is a contract which says there is a slash payment API endpoint, which is a post request. And there are some predefined fields which you have to send. Underneath the payment API, there could be multiple interactions within the ecosystem. These could be connecting to account APIs or balance APIs for the payment system to function and do some processing logic based on the balance which is available within the account. All these are abstracted using the API which is the payment API for the consumer who is going to access this slash payment endpoint. So this is where APIs abstract the whole ecosystem with the endpoint. Now there is also another API which the system is going to provide which is going to be called as payment history because once the payment is done the consumer wants to look at the history of his transactions. Now, how can I do that? So using the payment API, we did real time transactions, but where is my history stored, right? So we need to provide an endpoint for that specifically, which is again, slash payment slash history, using which the consumer can now query the history of transactions, which was done by a specific account holder. Now, how do I get or how do I achieve this? From the balance API, when a balance got detected, we are going to send the message into a separate queue, which is going to be called as the balance queue. The message denotes what is the balance of the particular account holder. And that message is sent to the balance queue. We are going to consume that from a process or a flow or a processor called as transaction processor. This is just again another consuming application, which is just consuming these messages from the queue and persisting it into its own database called transactions database. Now, in order to serve instant history API response, we're going to create a transactions API and we're going to abstract that using the payment history API. So when consumers use the payment history, they can directly hit the transactions API, which hits the transaction database. It doesn't go to the balance database or the account database. Instead, it goes to something called as transactions database, which holds the history of all transactions which occurred within this particular system. Now all the oranges or the endpoints which we are exposing to the internal system or the external system are called as the APIs and we do have something called as balance queue and then transaction processor which are processing events. So within the same architecture and within the same ecosystem we do have APIs which are existing and we do have events which are existing. So if somebody says go with API first approach define why do you need an API and when do you need an API. The same with events. When do you need an event and does my use case fit into the event first approach or should I have APIs in one part and also events in the other part. There could be cases where you don't need any events within your ecosystem and you can purely stick with APIs and you don't have to think about events at all. However, when you're thinking about events, make sure you understand that you don't need an API and when should you use events versus when should you use APIs. So now let's look at some of the limitations of each of these. So APIs usually are difficult to handle cascading failures. When there are multiple calls which you are making to multiple APIs, you will have to have individual fault tolerance or failure handling mechanisms and you need to take a different path for each of the response codes and things like that. And when you have multiple API calls, this adds to the complexity when you are adding multiple failures with different probabilities and combinations. The next one is the flexibility. The consumers doesn't have flexibility in terms of using the protocol. You will have to use the REST protocol. You will have to connect using the HTTP or WebSocket or whatever protocol is defined. You will have to use that. The next one is scalability. You cannot indefinitely scale your APIs. When the volume is huge, you will have to think about bottlenecks between your APIs and your bottlenecks within your databases. Because if you scale your APIs indefinitely, then your bottleneck will be shifted to other source, which is your database. Now you'll have to infinitely scale your database as well. Depending on the type of workload and the type of message you're processing, you will have to think whether APIs are the right way or events are the right way. With events, there is an issue with tracking the status of the event, whether it was processed or not. 
because with APIs, you get instant response. So you can easily identify whether it was processed or if there was any failure. But in terms of events, you need to track each and every status of a message if you want to get an act, whether this particular event was processed or not. Again, events also have some difficulty with error handling because you will have to now compensate some of the transactions. Let's say a payment fails within an event-based system. Now you'll have to compensate by reverting your balance which got detected and things like that which could have gone wrong within your ecosystem. So that's where compensating events needs to be generated. So it's not that straightforward but you will have to still work around by using compensating transactions within your event-based system. Those are some of the limitations. I'll just summarize what we just discussed. APIs provides instant response which are synchronous and follows a contract. Events on the other hand are asynchronous. They react to state changes and they also follow a contract. Using APIs, you do direct communication. With events, you have an intermediary or a mediator using which you are going to communicate your messages between the producer and the consumer. We have to use APIs when we need to have tightly coupled systems. If we need more flexibility in terms of consuming the data and then processing the message, we can create event-based systems. Later on, we saw a case study of designing a payment interface where we created different APIs, for example, the payment API and the payment history API, using which you can query different data. And using the transactions processor, we processed real-time events from the balance API on the transactions, which we were able to show as a transaction history to the user using another API. Finally, we discussed some of the limitations in terms of flexibility and scalability in the APIs and also with respect to compensating transactions and error handling in events. I hope you were able to understand and distinguish the importance of APIs and the events and where should you use them and can they coexist together. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.